In this experiment, we're going to be brominating an alkene. We will be starting with transcinamic acid. It has this carbon-carbon double bond, and we'll be adding the bromine molecule to the transcinamic acid. As we know, this is going to cause one bromine atom to be added to each one of the carbon atoms of the carbon-carbon double bond. The goal of this experiment is for us to determine the stereochemistry of these two carbons, um, to which the bromines were added. So we're going to figure out if these carbon and carbon atoms end up with R stereochemistry or S stereochemistry. To perform this reaction, we're going to be using the addition under reflux apparatus, although we will not actually be performing this reaction under reflux. We will be keeping our round bottom flask in a warm water bath, uh, 50 degrees Celsius, and the reagents are pretty simple here. So we will have our trans cinnamic acid in the round bottom flask. We'll also be putting in a little bit of acetic acid as our solvent in the round bottom flask. We'll be adding the bromine via a separatory funnel. And that bromine is going to be dissolved in acetic acid. Bromine all by itself, just pure bromine, BR2, is really, really dangerous to work with. So. We'll be dissolving it in the acetic acid to make it a little bit easier to work with. And then don't forget with our water condenser, we want to have the water coming into the bottom port and then coming out the top port. So let's see how this reaction works. We're going to be starting with about 1.5 grams of trans cinnamic acid. Now I'm going to assemble the glassware for addition under reflux. I'm going to be starting by securing the Clayson head or Clayson adapter to the three prong clamp, and then I'll position the empty round bottom flask underneath the Clayson head. Right now I'm just trying to get all of the um, clamps and ring stand and everything in the, right, in the right place. This is the dish that I'm going to be using for the warm water bath. It's currently not heating. Now I'm going to position the water condenser on the Clayson head, clip it into place, and I'll connect my water tubing to the faucet, and then also one tube goes down the drain. And then last but not least, I'll position the separatory funnel into the Clayson head, and give everything a good twist to make sure that all of the grease has been evenly distributed. And now our glassware is ready. I'm gonna get the water heating up. We want to bring this up to 50 degrees. Now that the glassware is assembled, I'm gonna be adding the reagents to the round bottom flask. Because I'm using those blue plastic clips, the Keck clips, I can easily lift all of my glassware up and release the round bottom flask. I'm going to begin by putting a little stir bar, a magnetic stirrer inside the round bottom flask to help mix everything during the reaction. And then I'm going to transfer the cinnamic acid that I weighed at the beginning of the experiment. This is a pretty fine powder um, and it is a little bit difficult to transfer without making a mess. Now I am going to be adding the solvent, which is glacial acetic acid. Remember, glacial acetic acid is concentrated acetic acid. We'll be adding six milliliters to the round bottom flask. And as I'm adding it, I'm rinsing it down the, the opening of the round bottom flask to rinse away any cinnamic acid that got stuck to the inside of the top of the round bottom flask. The cinnamic acid is not dissolving in the glacial acetic acid, and this is what I was expecting. I didn't expect that it would dissolve, but it will dissolve over the course of the reaction. Once I get this round bottom flask secured into place, I will just continue working on bringing the temperature of the water bath up to 50 degrees Celsius. The water bath is at 50 degrees Celsius, so it's time to start adding the bromine to the round bottom flask. This brown bottle contains 10 milliliters of one molar bromine in acetic acid, HOAC. I'm going to transfer it to the separatory funnel, making sure the stopcock is closed before I pour the bromine into the separatory funnel. Out of all the chemicals that I work with, bromine is probably the one that I'm the most afraid of. Can you see all of like the orange vapors around the opening of the brown bottle as I'm pouring the bromine into the separatory funnel? 
It's just, in general, a really nasty chemical, and I really don't like working with it. Now, once I get the bromine added to the separatory funnel, and I'm going to, you know, quickly and carefully close the lids on everything to try to keep all those orange vapors inside the glassware, I'm going to add the bromine from the separatory funnel to the round bottom flask in small portions, about two milliliters at a time, which is difficult to gauge with a separatory funnel. Watch the color down in the round bottom flask as the bromine is added to the round bottom flask. The bromine molecule itself is what's causing this dark orange color in the solution that's in the separatory funnel. And initially, as it gets transferred into the round bottom flask, we'll still see that orange color as the bromine, you know, just moves itself into the round bottom flask. But as the bromine begins to react with the transcinamic acid in the round bottom flask, the orange color will start to disappear as the bromine is reacted and converted into something new. Monitoring the temperature of this water bath, it looks like it is starting to get a little bit too warm, but I have a little beaker of ice handy that I can drop a few pieces of ice into the round bottom flask to help bring that temperature down. So right now what I'm doing is just watching the color of the round bottom flask and waiting for the color to begin to fade. Again, I'm looking to see um, that the bromine that I added has actually completed reacting with the alkene. Once that color fades itself to kind of a pale yellow or more like a lemony yellow color, not quite so orange, I will know that all of the bromine that I added has been reacted and it's time for me to add a little bit more. And so I'm just gonna continue repeating this process, adding some bromine, letting it react and stir until I see the color change to a light yellow and then adding a little bit more. And throughout the whole time, I'll be monitoring the temperature of the water bath, making sure that it doesn't get too high above 50 degrees. All of the bromine has been added to the round bottom flask and the solution was allowed to sit and stir and react for about 15 minutes. At this point, the solution is kind of like a medium orangey color. That orange color indicates to me that there might be a little bit of bromine left in that round bottom flask that has not yet reacted. So before we proceed, I am going to be cleaning up that extra unreacted bromine. We'll be doing this by adding an inert, non-reactive alkene, cyclohexene. Cyclohexene, because it's an alkene, will react with and remove any excess bromine that might be present in the round bottom flask. But it's not gonna react with anything else that's in the round bottom flask, so we don't have to worry about it messing up our product. As I add the cyclohexene, watch the color of the round bottom flask just magically turn a very pale yellow color. That's verifying to us that all of the extra bromine has been removed from the round bottom flask. So since the bromine has been removed, we are now ready to solidify this product. I'm transferring it to an Erlenmeyer flask, and then we will be crystallizing the product by placing the Erlenmeyer flask in, in a beaker of ice water. This product is really, really thick. We're gonna filter it out, let it dry for just a little while, a couple minutes, and then we're gonna recrystallize it. are going to be crystallizing from a 50% ethanol solution. Like we've added almost 
enough ethanol for this to dissolve. It's very difficult to see because of the steaminess inside the beaker. has completely dissolved so we're now going to let it cool down to room temperature and then finish cooling in an ice bath and then we'll filter it. Okay, we've been sitting in ice for a while and it looks like we have some small crystals in there that we're going to filter. Once we get them filtered we're going to be letting them sit overnight to dry and we'll analyze them tomorrow. Rinsing these crystals with an ice cold 50% ethanol mixture. starting to melt at 201 degrees. Oh no, it's not, it's just kind of brown. Okay. Disregard, edit that. It's not melting, it's brown. starting to melt at 202 degrees. And it is finished melting still at 202 degrees.